with this. In this video, I'll be talking about taking the definite integral, for example, of a function which is uh, the exponential function but raised to a polynomial power of degree higher than one. And in such case, it actually becomes quite hard to integrate and it's actually a non-elementary antiderivative, non-elementary integral in other words. That means usual algebraic techniques uh, are not sufficient in order to integrate this kind of argument. And what I'm talking about is namely something like this. Uh, integral of e to x to the second or e to the x to the to the third and so on um, and such an integral it's really not easy to integrate it in usual terms and of course for example the definite integral can be uh, calculated using a computer software it is absolutely possible uh, approximations and so on uh, for example the general solution for 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 such integrals like this will usually be in terms of uh, the error function but still that's not a very elementary function it's not an elementary function in the sense of being able to be just found through uh, this simple way now um, the idea or algebraically with some uh, deduction and uh, usual integration techniques and the point of point of this video is to let's say go through an example where i want to actually find the integral of this thing but not only the entire derivative but instead of looking for the entire derivative itself, it might actually be easier to use a different technique that I'll introduce in a second and actually have the question of what will the definite integral of this be from, let's say, 0 to 1 for simplicity or maybe better, let's make it a little wider or maybe 0 to 1 is enough, but yeah, 0 to 2, let's do 0 to 2. And in such case, the question is what will be the entire derivative of this? Uh, on this interval, what will be the area under the curve of e to the x to the second where this graph, it will look something like, on this interval, it will look something like this on the interval that we are looking at, 0 to 2 on x it will look something like this even quicker than it shows up here on this um, drawing, it will really quickly start going very steeply up so past 1, it will start getting very high values but in any case and that's maybe a reason why this would maybe be better to let's just do from 0 to 1 even for calculation techniques as or calculation simplicity as will be evident in a second so the point is this cannot be integrated in the usual way uh, trying you know to apply u sub here there's no uh, one or, or one order uh, lower one degree uh, lower uh, term to cancel out with and so on or e to the x just does not apply here because it's e to the x to the second right so the point is, one can use Taylor series and replace this. So uh, I'm doing interval 0 to 1. And what I will say, instead of integrating this function as it is, I can actually replace this inside by the re-expression of this e to the x squared by the Taylor series. And for this, what's really useful to do is to first figure out, well, what is the Taylor series for e to the x? So it's probably one of the easiest ones to remember. It is namely as follows. Uh, it can be written using uh, some notation, so 0 to n of x to the n and n factorial uh, in the denominator, denominator. So in the numerator is x to the n starting with 0 and in the denominator is n factorial. That means that it will go something like this. It will go x to the 0 over 0 factorial plus x to the first over first, 1 factorial plus x to the second over 2 factorial plus x to the third over 3 factorial and simplified it will be 1 over 1 plus x over 1 plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 6 and so on and so on and so on and this goes forever and of course the more terms one has the more accuracy one has but on this nice small interval it will actually indeed when one verifies this using digital software if one wants later this will indeed, uh, when using just for example five terms, the first five terms will be sufficient in order to give a very good approximation. So the idea here is we don't have e to the x straight out, but we have e to the x squared. That means wherever there was um, x, I will have to replace it by x squared. So the same kind of thing will apply now. So basically, now I said that the rule for e to the x in Taylor polynomial uh, translation is this, so e to the x, uh, so I'll put into parentheses as an object, or I can say, okay, yeah, let's say independent x, 
is uh, the sum 0 to n, so n starts at 0, of x to the n over n factorial. And if it's e to the x to the second, well, in this parenthesis will be x to the second. Again, we'll start from n equals 0, go until whatever high value of m one chooses to go all the way to. Of course, software helps a lot when one tries to get this expansion. It saves a lot of time, but here on paper, we'll just on, on the board, just writing it manually, go to five terms, let's say. So, um, again, the same thing, but it's x to the second because the argument in the exponential, so the exponential function with base e, the general Taylor expansion is this, but x to the second, again, the same, but where is x, you will put x to the second, to the n, and, and a factorial stays the same. So this is the point. This is the way it will be expanded. So how will this go? Well, it will start with x to the second uh, to the zero over zero factorial. So the first one again will be one. Then plus x to the second to the first plus x to the second to the second over two factorial plus x to the third over x to the third x to the second to the to the third over uh, three factorial plus x to the second to the fourth over four factorial. So what is this if one simplifies this? Well, what this ends up being is e to the x to the second is approximately with the first five Taylor series terms. Translation will be one plus x squared plus uh, x squared over 6 plus x to the x to the 6 over over um, x, x to the 4th so it's x squared plus x to the 4th here x to the 4th over 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 just 2 not 6 x to the 4th over 2 x to the 6 over 6 here plus uh, x to the 8th over, so this is four, 4 times more even, so it's over 24, all right? So this is the first five terms of that expansion. And what this means is that I can say that this integral is roughly equal to, okay, so one can do this curly line or dot to, uh, to just denote that it is roughly equal to, especially on this small interval. If one looks at the bigger interval, let's say whatever this function looks like, so whatever this function looks like, well, the Taylor series will use this polynomial. So it will be really close, so it will go like different, but it will be quite close on this smaller interval around the zero, and then it will diverge away again. And adding more terms would make this fur out points even closer to the actual up, mm, curve that's being approximated. But as we just have five terms, well, they will make it reasonably very close uh, around the zero and so on. Uh, and even to the interval zero to one, it will be sufficient to just do five terms, very close on this interval to the actual uh, almost exact value. So, uh, the point is that basically, uh, explicitly here, it was stated that this can be roughly um, roughly uh, said to be um, a Taylor series expansion and we've carried out these first five terms. So, instead of integrating this, we will integrate this polynomial, as I said, this is just roughly, and this polynomial will be used. 1 plus x squared plus x to the 4th over 2 plus x to the 6 over 6 plus x to the 8 over 24. This is all the argument of the integral. And now this is a simple polynomial uh, integration. So the point now here is to just integrate it. And whatever, whatever value it will be given, if one then uses technology, digital software, in order to approximate zero to one of this function, as given here explicitly, it will be very close to this. So, what this will be using power reverse power rule uh, x plus taking the entire derivative plus x to the 7 over 42. Um, already now it shows that. It won't necessarily be so nice to actually evaluate this even. So 9 times 24 is 180 plus um, 32, 36. 
Yeah. So that will be over 216. All right. So just to check, x plus x cubed over 3 plus x to the 5th over 10 plus x to the 7 over 42 plus x to the 9 over 216. Even this term will just add 1 over 216 when evaluated. This integral is from 1 to 0, from 0 to 1. And so when evaluating this, this will get 1 plus, just evaluating the integral as usual, 1 over 3 plus 1 over 10. And indeed, to the 1, these powers don't really matter even. So that's interesting to realize as well. Okay, so um, right now we've got this, this, this expression and whatever this number is equal to, well, one can do common denominator. Um, I can do common denominator for, for example, the first three, that will be 30 plus 10 plus 3 uh, over 30. And then uh, the next ones, well, that's... Uh, not so easy to create the common denominator, but nevertheless they will be far smaller, smaller increments, but they will still add to more um, accuracy. But in any case, this integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x to the second should be roughly equal to 43 over 30 plus these two more numbers when using just the first five terms of the Tyler expansion to approximate. And this can be, of course, put into calculator and evaluate as a decimal number altogether, but uh, it's not so easy to do right now on the board. But in any case, the point here was we were, we were having this function into the x to the second, and there's always option to just replace this thing by a Tyler series expansion, put it straight inside the integral, integrate this polynomial that represents it as usual, and then evaluate the polynomial as the initial uh, function, function would have not really be evaluated.